What's going on guys? Hope y'all are doing fantastic today. So it's Sunday. It's actually not Sunday. No, it's actually Monday, but by the time you're watching this, it's probably Tuesday. So that means I'm a couple days late to putting out my weekly rotation, but there's a good reason for it. And I also rocked a lot of awesome fragrances this last week. I decided to class it up a little bit, but I was also feeling a little sassy. So I wanted to rock fragrances that had a classic feel with a modern edge. So stay tuned and join me as we get into week number 11 of my Whiffs of the Week. Kick it! What's going on my beautiful fragrance family and welcome back to My Two Cents. My name is Brian and this is the show all about boosting your confidence through the art of fragrance becoming a lasting scent memory. Okay, I know, I was a day late, a buck short. Don't worry, I'm writing the report. I'm a couple days late on my weekly rotation, but the reason behind that is I had a friend uh, from Austin, Texas fly into Nashville, him and his girlfriend. I hadn't seen him in 10 years. So Jeremy and I drove up to Nashville to hang out with them. But Brian had never been in Nashville, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. I'm going to have Brian on the show, and we're gonna do the whiffs of the week together. Well, my grandiose scheme uh, yeah, it didn't work because Nashville was freaking butt slammed. So I scratched that and I decided just to hang out and show Brian and his girlfriend a good time around Nash Vegas. And we had a blast. We had a blast. But now I'm just rambling. So let's get into some fragrances. We're here to talk about fragrances. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into I'm late. I'm late. I'm very, very late. Whiffs of the week. Before I get into what I was rocking this week, what were you rocking this week? What is your scent of right now, today? Let me know. Drop me a comment down below. And if we share any of the same fragrances throughout the week, heck yeah, man. That's freaking awesome. And if you are new to this channel, then do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Throw me up one of these. And like I said before, drop me a comment down below. I look forward to getting to know you. So starting the week out Monday, I went with the epitome of class with a modern edge. And it's Dior Eau Sauvage Parfum. Original Eau Sauvage, 1966, 55 years old. In 2012, they decided to modernize it a little bit. Still have that classy edge to it, but also give it that sassiness, spice it up a little bit. Now this is a 2017, so this has actually been reformulated. So you don't have the myrrh in there, but I still get kind of this incense -y myrrh when it starts drying down, but it starts out with that bright lemon, you get the lavender, but my favorite part about this is the dry down. It's not the loudest fragrance. For a little bit over an hour, you're getting that bright citrus and lavender combo. Then it dries down to this sweet resinous elemy. And it still has this nice spicy kind of smoky incense to it and myrrh. Though there are some differences between the 2012 to the reformulation in 2017, I still think this is a fantastic fragrance. It's the bad boy Eau Sauvage. It's classy, but sassy. That morning, I went with Eau Sauvage Parfum. Monday evening, I got home. I didn't need a shower. I wasn't sweaty or anything. So I just wanted to spray something else on. Eau Sauvage went, oh, bye-bye. I went with a new indie house that I'm super loving. And it's City Rhythm. And it's Manhattan Midnight. I got this fragrance a little over a month ago. And I'm loving it. I'm not going to say too much about it. Because I have a full review that I'm going to be doing. Coming out very soon. But I will say this. When I first got this fragrance, I wasn't so sure of it. It, it didn't really project off my skin, but over time, I realized how many layers this fragrance has and every single change I stink in love. There is a time in this fragrance that where all the notes combine together that really take me back to Manhattan, like downtown Manhattan. And I love when fragrances can do that. You get this really nice green creamy tobacco in this, you get some nice cardamom, some nice spiciness, you get some citrus and beautiful aromatics, nice woodiness as well but that's all I'm really gonna say. That evening, I went to bed smelling amazing. Instead of counting sheep, I count my whiffs. And that's how I get a good night's sleep. So Tuesday, Tuesday, I wore the same fragrance all day. And it's a fragrance that, I, again, doesn't get too much hype. It doesn't really get talked about, but it's fantastic. Cause it's classy, but it's edgy. And it's Bon Viver from Nottingham Wilson. Yeah, Mr. Smelly, 1977. I love this fragrance. This is a love for me. It's classic. It reminds me of Eau Sauvage, like before it was reformulated for the umpteenth time. Though I've never smelled the original Eau Sauvage, I have smelled quite a few older formulations, and this kind of gives me that feel. 
It doesn't smell exactly like that. It's definitely unique and goes in a different direction, but it takes me back to that. Lime and lemon, you get this really nice London dry gin right off top. Then you get these nice spices flowing through it. It's a beautiful modern take on a Fujipro. Yeah, a Fougere and Shipra, because I get kind of Fougere vibes, but I also get Shipra vibes. It's such a good fragrance. And I get a good eight hours of longevity out of it. The projection uh, for the first couple hours is awesome. And then it settles down and does what a lot of your Fougeres tend to do. They settle down and sit closer to your skin, but you get these nice, like, fresh wafts throughout the day. I love Bon Viver. I think this is a fantastic fragrance. So I got home from work that day and I wanted to smell like Bon Viver again. So I did. It's classy, but it's sassy. Now it's hump day. Hey, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? It's hump day. I stuck with the classy sassy vibe and I felt a little dangerous. So I went with Rosa, Danger. The two fragrances from the Parfum Cologne collection that are my favorite are Danger and Scandal. Look, Elysium is a fantastic fragrance does not last on my skin very long at all. None of the Parfum Colognes really do. They're really bright and fresh and citrusy and spicy up top, and then they become more of a skin scent. They're good gateways into getting into Roja fragrances because you really get those like natural ingredients. You can smell the quality, the luxuriousness to it. Still pricey, but I will say I freaking love this fragrance. The note breakdown on this is like reading the encyclopedia. So what I get out of it, Citruses, some lavender, rhubarb, which is an interesting note. It adds this kind of watery bitterness to this. Then some woods, patchouli, and oak moss. Definitely a classic fragrance profile, but with a modern edge. I love the spiciness in the very opening. It does kind of also remind me of Viking, though this is better than Viking, and also kind of has an Old spicy kind of feel to it. It doesn't smell like Old Spice, but I get that type of vibe from it because it's old school, but this is way more modern. Spicy, aromatic, woody. I get about five hours longevity out of this, but I love the way that I smell. I even love how it just settles on your skin, and when you get wafts of it and you get your arm up in it, it starts that enjoyment over again because you're like, Oh man, that smells stinking good. It's expensive, but this is the best way to get into Roja fragrances, honestly. So all day that day, I was feeling dangerous. I was feeling classy. I was feeling sassy. And I went with danger, parfum cologne. So Tuesday's gone and Wednesday went back with her family. And now we're on to Thursday. So Thursday, I did my episode on essential parfums, which is, in my opinion, the cheapest retail niche fragrance house that you can buy. And the fragrance I went with is Bois Imperial. Now, if you have not checked out my episode on essential parfums, then I will leave a card right here for you so you can go check out one of the most affordable niche houses on the market. Bois Imperial is so fantastic. Gets compared to Ganymede, never ever smelt Ganymede, so I can't vouch for that. But Ganymede is way more expensive than this. Same perfumer, the Akagala wood that is in this is done so stinking good. Spicy and woody and last eight plus hours on my skin. So good, 75 bucks for 100 ml. It's so stick and cheap and such high quality. I freaking love my entire day with this because I got home from work that day, I didn't need a shower and it was still on my skin. Eight hours later, I was getting wafts of it. I do become a little nose blind to it and I just think that's the combination of the woods and the spices. Sometimes I tend to go nose blind with certain woods and spice combinations, but throughout the day, I would get wafts of it. And that's what I really enjoy because every time I smelled it, I was like, man, this is stinking awesome. So definitely go check out that episode and check out Essential Parfums. Bon Imperial, fantastic. And if you have this, let me know in the comments what you think about it, how it lasts on your skin. Talk to me, Smalls. Come Friday, it cooled off so much. We had a lot of rain throughout the week, and I guess that just pushed out the hot air. And so I wanted to go with one of my favorite fall fougeres. And it's Tom Ford, Fougere d'Argent. So this is one of my favorite fall fougeres because this has such a warm, woody dry down, though it's also nice and spicy. And that's coming from the coumarin that's in it. It has all the fougere qualities, but with such a nice modern twist with this nice Akagala wood, which almost gives it a little bit of an Udi characteristic. So I love Beau de Jour, but I tend to wear this more in the fall and winter. Beau de Jour is that bright lavender, lots of beautiful lavender. This has a bad boy side to it. It's kind of like Bruce Wayne. I could totally see Bruce Wayne wearing this because you spray it on and it's nice and classy. And then as it starts to ride down, you turn into the dark night. 
It's got this bad boy sassiness, edginess to it. I freaking love it. Awesome for the fall. So that morning I rocked Fougere d'Argent. That evening I got home, I got ready um, because I was doing an Instagram live with Ken Sense. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different here because I'm going to throw my Instagram handle down here again. I'm also gonna throw up Ken Sense. This is his Instagram right here. Go check him out. Go show him some love on IG because Ken and I are doing a lot of Instagram lives together. That Friday evening, we did an Instagram live and like Ross hopped on from TLTG Reviews. George Zaharoff hopped on. It was a lot of fun. So we're going to be doing a lot of those like bi-weekly, possibly weekly. And if you want to do something fun on the weekends, check out our Instagram lives. So that evening, I stuck with the classy theme. We were talking about a whole bunch of different types of fragrances. And the fragrance I pulled out was a fragrance I picked up earlier this year and I haven't really shown much love to. And a lot of people don't. And it comes from Parfums MDCI. And it's Le Elegant. And that is such a suiting name for this. This is such an elegant fragrance. I don't know if I've ever seen a review and I don't know why I haven't reviewed it yet. I've had it for some time now and I kind of forgot about it. But this is such an unforgettable fragrance and I'm kind of ashamed of myself. Parfums MDCI makes very high quality, natural smelling fragrances. And I never saw a review on it. I didn't hear any reviews on it. I never heard any talk about it. I picked it up based on the note breakdown and I'm really glad I did. They're a little expensive, like 250 bucks for a 75 ml. But I put these up with like Roja quality or in Fragrance Dubois. These are high quality. They're stinking good. Honestly, for a luxury niche, I think they're reasonably priced. Still expensive. Definitely something you want to try before you buy. But I'm going to be doing a full review on this soon, so I'm not going to say too much. Saffron, spices, and one of the most beautiful iris accords I have smelled. It is so well done. I will be doing a full review on this, so stay tuned for that. But I smell elegant AF during my Instagram live. Saturday, I got a package in the mail, and I couldn't wait to put this fragrance on. And that fragrance is Karen Terrence Hughes, Legend. I've done my first impressions. I'll leave a card up here for you. And you, the subscribers, have spoken. You want full reviews on this. So I'm not gonna say too much about this. I will be doing a full review very soon because I'm gonna be doing a lot of testing with this and Maverick throughout this week. What I will say about this, if you have haze or if you're interested in getting like haze blue or haze black, this is a great way to start. Has similarities to haze blue and haze black, but it's different. Very urban, modern, edgy take on a fougere. Longevity is good. Bright and bursting citruses. Again, not gonna say too much about it. Freaking great fragrance. Can't wait to do my full review. Stay tuned for that. Now we're on to Sunday, the last day of the week. And as you know, I was in Nashville. And when you're in Nashville, you find a place to park and then you walk everywhere. And so that's what we did. And I knew that was gonna happen. So I went with a Lemon Mint from Mancera. Not classic. Not very classy, not very edgy, but it's a good fragrance. Not a great fragrance. I wouldn't put it great. I like it, I don't love it. But I wanted something that was fresh, and clean and citrusy and aromatic. I don't know why nobody's ever said this, but I get a bit of like a powdery vibe in the dry down. And that's kind of how it dries down on my skin. It's kind of powdery and creamy, a little woody with just like a little bit of like lemon zest. I actually do get just like the teeniest hint of mint in this as well. Though not a lot. I don't think this is actually properly named because I don't get any oud either. But this is a good fragrance because it did last the entire time that I was walking around Nashville. I was getting wafts of it. Even Brian and his girlfriend said I smelled awesome. We walked into a couple bars and I mean it was, like I said, asshole to elbows. And I was walking around people and people would stop me and be like, hey man, you smell good. So this is a good fragrance. I wouldn't say this is great fragrance. I don't know if it deserves as much hype as it's getting because there's so many other fragrances in the Mancera line that I think are better than this, but it's still a good fragrance and I'm not discrediting those who love it. As for me, it's just a light. There's nothing I dislike about it. It's just a light. It's not something whoa, mind blowing to me. But all day walking around Nashville, I rocked Aude Lemon Mint. I got home that evening at about 11.30 and an Aude Lemon Mint had vanished. So I decided to go back with another fragrance that I wore on Monday. City Rhythm, Manhattan Midnight. Such a great fragrance and I can't wait to do my full review on it. But guys, that is my weekly rotation. Week number 11. I can't believe it's already been 11 weeks. Thank you so much for being patient and I really appreciate all the love and support. You guys are freaking awesome. I love every single one of you. Again, if you are new to this channel and you like content like this, then do me a favor and like, comment, share, 
and subscribe. But that is it for me. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.